Um, you know, duct leakage in existing homes can cause major comfort and health issues while also wasting energy. And duct leakage target requirements for uh, programs such as Energy Star certification and many green building certification programs are getting much more stringent. Now, whether you're dealing with new construction or existing housing, single family or multifamily, the reality is we need to take a smarter and easier approach to sealing our duct work to help get those guaranteed results. And so that's what we'll be discussing today on uh, this week's uh, session. Now, before we get started, we always love to do a membership spotlight. And so not only one GHI member, not two, not three, but four members came together to get involved in this project, including Mark Miller Architecture, Abueva Builders, Catalyst Partners, and Eco Achievers. They came to together to help achieve uh, this Lakeside Net Zero home in Michigan uh, reach lead platinum level and the Passive House US 2021 core uh, source zero certification resulting in, uh, and this is the exciting part, winning the recently announced lead for homes 2024 uh, outstanding single family project. So a huge congratulations to all four of our members there working together. You can learn more about this project on the lead for homes awards and on the GHI website where we hope you'll re review the project and be inspired to learn from it to help uh, on uh, your project or your client's project. And you know, this is who Green Home Institute members are. This is what Green Home Institute members do. So can you learn more at greenhomeinstitute.org slash become a member. Also, we need to say a thanks to our Silver Level sponsor, Panasonic Ventilation. They offer all the solutions for a healthier home and its needs all the way down to supply and exhaust only strategies all the way up through demand controlled, smart energy recovery ventilation and everything in between that. I've personally been using Panasonic now for over a decade in the homes I've had where I've lived to help keep my air fresh and healthy. Energy Star certified inline fans or exhaust fans to meet, meet the baseline ventilation rates or continuous or admit, uh, intermittent exhaust to comply with various standards. Energy recovery ventilators ranging from 20 to 200 CFM, decentral or central systems that work in cold climates that help uh, make the best balanced solutions. These are paired with demand controlled air quality sensors so they can ramp up and only run when pollution is detected. You can head over to Panasonic uh, Ventilation and learn more. All right, this session is brought to you by the Green Home Institute. The Green Home Institute is a nonprofit with a mission to empower people to make healthier, and more sustainable choices in the renovation and construction of the places we live. We are a small but mighty team of three. Uh, my name is Brett Little. I'm the education manager here, and I will be your moderator today. This course is approved for multiple continuing education units, including our certified green home professional designation under the energy, health, and materials pillar. AIA health, welfare, and safety may make it applicable to your state-based design or contractor license. Make sure you snag that Passive House Certified Passive House Consultant code. The five-digit code will be sent to you upon completion of this course within your certificate. So with that, I want to hand it off to our speakers today, who I will let introduce themselves. We've got uh, um, Tracy and Jared here from Seal and Rob um, from Priority Energy. So welcome to all of you. Thank you for um, doing this session, and I will hand it over to you. So please take it away. Very good. Thank you so much, Brett. Uh, well, I'm Tracy Martin. I am a program director here at AeroSeal. I've uh, been with the company almost 10 years. Uh, really excited to talk to, to everyone here today about uh, how things are changing in the duct sealing world. Um, looking forward to our conversation today. Jared, while you're introducing, I'm going to get our slides up. All right. Thank you. Uh, so my name is Jared Scott. Uh, I'm the national director on the sales side here for for AeroSeal, uh, working with Tracy, I think for about nine years um, here as AeroSeal has uh, uh, grown through uh, uh, as a company here and work with uh, fine dealers like uh, like Rob uh, and others that um, are taking, uh, uh, taking our product to market, but uh, also solving problems, more importantly, solving problems and reaching energy efficiency in homes and projects. Rob? <clears throat> I'm Rob Shilgin. I'm president and founder of Priority Energy. 
Uh, I've been doing this about 16 years. We've been an aerosol dealer, I think 15 of those 16 years. It's been a while now. Um, in addition to that, we're a ResNet provider, both training and rating provider, BPI auditor and training house. Uh, we help and consult and test and verify in a number of uh, energy efficiency related indoor air quality and building durability initiatives from residential to commercial construction. Very good. All right. So why are we talking about duct sealing and uh, why now? Uh, you know, there are a lot of factors that are driving the demand for properly sealed ductwork. And probably first and foremost is energy efficiency. Uh, you can't look left or right without hearing a message uh, or, or seeing the importance grow for energy efficiency. And part, part of that uh, relates to the fact that utility companies and they, they're getting a lot of pressure to uh, reduce peak demand, lower generation costs, and then increase their grid resiliency, um, which, of course, uh, in the end, helps improve the environment. So there's a lot of pressure on the utility companies to uh, look for energy efficiency improvements uh, that can be made out in the marketplace. And then, of course, um, another one, and I, I think Rob's going to touch on this slide here, um, really important when it comes to system design. So Rob, uh, talk about this one for us. Yeah. So first, in terms of a utility standpoint, it's nice to see them finally recognizing the, the duck side of the equation. As I'm sure many people on the call know, when you look at the total efficiency of the system, it's really the efficiency of whatever the plant is, right? Whether you're heating or cooling, multiply times the efficiency of the, the, the distribution, which in our case is uh, air. Um, so getting that sealed up is the primary concern there. Of course, there's insulation as well. Um, but from a total efficiency standpoint, it, it's great if you have a 24 sear heat pump um, or a 95 plus percent uh, efficient furnace. Uh, if you're not delivering on the distribution, you're not going to deliver on the total efficiency. Um, so it's the, many of the utilities now are offering incentives around this, which is nice. But in terms of the total system design, it's it's more than just energy efficiency. We'll get into this a little bit later. It's well, this is a, a big part of it um, from a building durability um, and system um, durability standpoint. Um, the sealing up the ductwork is going to be uh, tremendously helpful on that front. Um, and then code compliance, um, I don't know if I'm sure many of you have watched the transition from 2018 to 21 and before that. Um, duct sealing is taking an ever increasing uh, more important role in this. So as we see in the slide here, 25 states have moved from 2018 to 2021. What does that finally mean? It means we're not just testing ducts outside of the condition space anymore. We're testing ducts both outside condition and inside the condition space. Um, three to four percent leakage is allowed depending on when you're testing for those ducts outside the condition space, eight percent for those inside of it. But what we're seeing is, is over and over again, this is one area that our, our builders, contractors, um, everyone seemed to struggle with. Um, for those of you who've been testing ductwork, I'm, see, I'm sure you've seen failures. Aerosil has been a big, um, a big factor for us. Um, we we increasingly we're, we're just going straight to ceiling, not driven by us, but by our contractors because they're tired of trying to meet these three and four percent standards. And they just know that the, the total cost or they've, they've come, to, come to know the total cost of actually implementing and installing this ductwork gets less when they're using AeroSeal to both test and, and seal that ductwork. Yep. And then um, just to kind of give you a visual, here's a, a map of code adoption uh, across the country. I'll let that sit for just a second. Okay. And then another, you know, another factor that's driving uh, the importance of properly sealed ductwork is indoor air quality. Uh, in some ways, the pandemic uh, was one of the greatest things that could happen to the indoor air quality market. Um, it's really grown and it's grown rapidly. So, 2019, before the pandemic, it was about a $7.4 billion industry. By the end of 22, when the pandemic was over-ish, uh, it had grown to a $9.8 billion industry, and it's expected to keep growing to about $11.9 billion by 2027. You add all that up and you do the math, you're looking at a 61% increase in a short amount of time. 
So I think, you know, stats aside, people care. They've always cared about clean, healthy air, but now they care even more than they ever have before. And I think it's up to professionals like all of us to help connect the dot to homeowners. I don't know that they they instinctively know that leaky ductwork can lead to poor air quality and in a big way. So it's up to us to help uh, connect that dot, create a little bit more awareness, and then provide them with the proper solutions uh, so they can have the, the healthiest air possible. And one more note about that, there's a lot of IAQ products and services out there. Many of them, though, just treat the symptoms. Um, when you properly seal the ductwork, you are identifying the, the root cause of a lot of the indoor air quality issue. Not all of it, but a, but a big source of it. And then after you identify that root cause, you are repairing it, restoring it, refreshing it, and uh, controlling where the air is coming from so you can deliver healthier air. Um, I like talking about that one. Pretty, pretty exciting and pretty passionate about it. Another one, of course, is uh, sustainability. This is another um, topic that is forefront in uh, the media. Uh, our mission, of course, is focused on reducing carbon emissions by one gigaton annually. That's a big goal. Um, but when you look at some more statistics, like the fact that buildings consume 40% of all of the energy produced across the globe, that's, that's, that's a big number. And then up to 50% of that energy, it's being wasted due to leaks in the envelope and leaks in the ductwork. And that, this is not something that can, that can go on forever. We got to do something about it. Um, when you properly seal ductwork, it's, it's kind of like the equivalent of planting about 50 trees. And then for every home that's sealed properly and thoroughly, uh, it's kind of like um, removing a car from the road. So the impact in terms of sustainability to our beautiful earth um, is big, and, and we're excited to be a part of that. The next thing, and Rob's going to touch on this, um, homeowners care. They really care about the benefits of duct sealing. Again, though, we have to help connect that dot. And so, Rob, I'm, I'm like for you to talk about this. Oh, you're muted. So just as a continuation of what you were talking about, Tracy, in terms of IAQ and energy efficiency. So, yeah, so it used to be homeowners only care about comfort. And we're in a unique, uh, have a unique perspective because most of our existing home duct sealing happens within our clients where we've done energy audits or we've consulted in some other way with that homeowner. Uh, if, if you, you know, brought this to us four or five years ago, I'd say this is our number one driver. Homeowners are having, they have a second floor in their home that's not getting as cool as the first or uh, a basement that's overcooled all the time. And so they'll, they'll come to us and ask how we might fix that. And duct sealing is a, usually a big part of that. But increasingly though, uh, IAQ, um, just recently actually, um, not with one of our clients in a, just a random conversation sitting with a doctor who was having problems not only with herself in terms of allergies, and IAQ related symptoms in uh, her lung health, but her child, more importantly to the doctor, was having increasing issues and they were actually looking at moving from the home. So in a conversation with her, we start talking and you know, we started looking at you know, potential, um, the potential root causes of what could be causing this. And she, you could tell she was very dismissive. She's like, I've been down this, I've been down this road, I've looked at many things. And we started talking about her ductwork. And I said, by chance, do you have any ductwork that's running through the attic of your house? She says, I do. And as we got a little deeper, and sure enough, um, they'd actually looked in their attic, they had found some potential issues, potential mold, other things. And when she started connecting the dots, you could see it's like, wow, I have ductwork that's carrying air that's potentially contaminating my home that's running through this really bad airspace in my home. And so we quickly evolved to, to fixing that. And then I can happy, I'm happy to say that their symptoms improved dramatically. So that's an IAQ, but energy efficiency as well. Um, we're seeing it from a homeowner perspective, you know, uh, we've done enough of these now. If, if they seal their ductwork and it's not running outside the conditioned space in an attic or an unconditioned crawl, then those homeowners are going to say, we can confidently say 15 plus percent. If they have ductwork that's running, and by the way, that's seasonal 
uh, energy usage. So if you break their utility bills between base load and seasonal, if you adjust what they're spending on heating and cooling, we're talking about 15 plus percent. And if that ductwork's running outside the condition space, we're probably closer to 20% or more. Um, so that, that's, that's definitely getting homeowners' attentions as you, uh, or attention as utility costs have come up. Um, the other part of this is, and I know we're, we're transitioning this as well, in terms of the, the general you know, total system efficiency, system durability, you know, Tracy, you mentioned the, the pandemic or COVID. Um, you know, I talk about this all the time. I, I really think there's a bigger pandemic out there right now. And as much as I hate to say it, and I, the word's been overused in the last four or five years, but we have a pandemic in our homes. Um, with the increasing levels of insulation in our homes, tighter air, you know, tighter homes, more airtight homes, um, we're seeing a, a change in the way that our homes are performing. And it's not a good way. Um, if when these systems are consistently oversized uh, or the ductwork's underperforming or some, some part of that system is broken, these systems are not properly dehumidifying the house. And we're starting to see a tremendous amount of moisture issues. And I would say 30 to 40% of the audits we did in the last two years have been moisture related. And, and if you were to look at the 30, 40% of all the homes we've touched, and we're talking hundreds and hundreds of homes in the last two years, I would guess at least 60% of them were, were moisture related. Um, mm. And it gets to the system underperforming. And, and the primary reason, if you really looked at root cause of that, is we have contractors that are oversizing their systems because they're accounting for duct leakage. So they know that that system needs to run an extra five or 10 minutes because they're losing X percent of the airflow from that duct work and it's not getting to the rooms that they need. And that's, that's causing issues. So, and then the system doesn't run enough overall. It's, it's kind of a round robin, round, round robin there, but um, you know, yeah, those are right. all the reasons we see why homeowners care. Yep. Makes sense. Um, another reason homeowners care, uh, home value. Um, when we're seeing homeowners invest in energy efficiency products and services, it affects the value of the home. Um, An interesting survey that was released by uh, ACHR said that 64% of homeowners were willing to pay more for a home with sealed ducts. That's kind of exciting. Um, but not just that. They're also looking for other things, you know, like Rob mentioned, proper insulation, proper uh, ventilation, proper uh, HVAC sizing and efficiency. Um, but it, it's important and it does drive uh, property value. Uh, Rob, anything you want to add on this one? Well, the interesting thing here, and I think that's great for all of us, the marketing that AeroSeal and all of us have done over the last 15 plus years, I think it's finally taking root. Um, we're actually seeing an increase, not an increasing, a tremendous amount of homeowners coming and asking specifically for AeroSeal. So that message is getting out there, whether it's they've seen this old house or they've seen something on TV or they've read articles on, on, on the web, um, they're familiar with AeroSeal. And they're asking for it by name, which has been really interesting and um, you know, makes us very happy. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, you you touched on this. Um, love for you to expand a little bit. But it, look, I, homeowners, they care very much about their HVAC. Um, it, it's considered a must have, not really a nice to have. Uh when they buy a system, I think often they're they're thinking, gosh, I hope I don't have to do this anytime soon again. So they're very focused on getting what they paid for in terms of performance, but also longevity. They don't want to have to buy another piece of equipment anytime soon. So Rob, why don't you talk a little bit about how uh, duct leakage can, can have a big factor in terms of system longevity? So there's a few, you know, few areas here. One, um, Homeowners are increasingly spending more money on their HVAC systems, finally. Uh, they're opting to spend maybe a little bit more on their furnace and their duct sealing and their air conditioner, where before they were only focused on, you know, the, we'll go with the traditional one of your countertops, right? I want granite or I want marble or whatever it is. We've seen a lot more homeowners start to, to grow interested in spending more on their, on their HVAC systems for all the things we've talked about, whether it's energy efficiency, IAQ. Um, and, you know, as they do that and spend more, they're getting 
higher end systems are getting systems that are running all the time because they know that that fan needs to run a hundred percent of the time. If they're filter, if they want that filter that they've spent the money on in their HVAC system to be effective or their ventilation system to carry fresh, th fresh air throughout the house. And the things, you know, we like to explain to our, our customer when, when you start using that furnace in that way, that furnace is, that fan is going to be running a lot more and it, it brings, it brings the potential of bringing in bad IAQ related things or to decrease the efficiency of the ductwork. And often misunderstood um, or misconception with ductwork is, is if you're running at a lower speed on your fan on your furnace, uh, which is often the case when you're doing it for ventilation and, I, and filtration and things. Um, it actually is a bigger hit to performance when you have leaky ductwork than when that ductwork is running full tilt, or when that, I should say, when that fan is running full tilt. Um, so at lower CFMs, it can cause more problems um, if your ductwork is not sealed. And then in addition to that, it's, it's, it's everything that we talked about. The, you know, the, if you don't seal the ductwork, you know, another angle on this is we're pulling um, potential contaminants not only into the house, both through the supply and return, mind you, it's not just the return, but also you're pulling potential contaminants into the furnace, right? You have a filter in front of that furnace, but it doesn't stop everything. So yeah. you will introduce more contaminants to the, the fan and, and build up dust and dirt in that fan quicker uh, without properly sealed ductwork. And it yeah. will cut down your need to clean that ductwork tremendously. Um, so yep. there's a number of reasons why it's important, but, the, you know, all of this will affect that. And it's not just system performance. I really want to stress HVAC system performance is part of it, but really think about the performance of the home. Um, and that gets back to those moisture-related problems that I talked about. If your system isn't sealed properly and isn't sized properly and, and running to dehumidify that house, you're going to have, you will potentially have issues with that home. Um, and duct sealing is a really important part of that to make sure that you can, uh, your home can perform well. Yep. All right. So or, I think uh, what we're going to get into next is, oh, I'm sorry, Jared. I was just about to hand it off to you. Please go ahead, Jared. Yeah, I, I'll take I'll take the hand off. Before we do that, we've got a couple questions uh, in here in the Q&A that uh, before we make this transition from uh, why now uh, to kind of explaining the automated process, uh, we, we had a question, uh, Larry had asked, uh, uh, Rob, can you repeat the figures in energy efficiency improvements uh, in quotation or in uh, parentheses here, seasonal energy difference resulting in duct sealing? So yeah, so if you break your utility bills down to just heating and cooling, right? So the differences of what it's taking to, the energy it's um, being consumed to heat and cool your home, what we're seeing consistently is right around 15% reduction when you seal that ductwork um, when it's in the condition space. So when the ductwork is 100% in the condition space or running into your conditioned basements or in your floor cavities or wall cavities, but all inside the house or the, better put the envelope. So inside the insulation and air sealing, when that ductwork's running outside the condition space, we're, we're pretty confident in saying that it's 20 plus, you know, you're 20% or more in terms of utility savings for seasonal. The and um, real quick, another relevant question here, and then I, I want to say, hey, get your questions in, but let's let's take the rest of the questions at the end. But just since this one's a kind of relevant one, you talk, yeah. you 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 jumped on, Rob. And the question is kind of like, you know, it's you know, heat pumps are on everybody's mind. We're making those transitions through Inflation Reduction Act rebates and whatever. Um, what is the thing you need to know about? duct leakage when making a transition from your your methane gas fired or propane gas fired system to your heat pump system and can you just speak to that i mean you kind of briefly touched on it but can you speak to that a little bit more yeah thanks probably probably not enough obviously the the big thing we coach our customers on when they're thinking about transitioning from a, a fossil fuel fired furnace to a heat pump or an electric uh, heating device is one, we're primarily dealing with cold weather climate. So if you're in an existing home, it's very likely that your heating load on your home, uh, an existing home in, cold, in a cold weather climate, in a climate zone, let's say four and above, that your heating load is gonna be much larger than your cooling load. Meaning it's gonna take more energy to, to heat your home than it does to cool your home. Just the nature of where we live. Now that changes a little bit as you get further south, but in cold weather climates, what that means is, is when you switch over to a heat pump, 
you may struggle to find a heat pump that can meet 100% of your needs. Or if it does, you're going to need 100% of the capacity of that heat pump. And so if you're not getting 100% of that airflow from, from the air handler out to your rooms, your heat pump is probably going to struggle. Uh, and or, you know, it could struggle in a couple of ways. One is just not getting the heat there, so you're going to have to have longer run times. Or your system performance is dropping, and so suddenly you're not able to rely on your heat pump as much, and you're adding electric resistance heat or some sort of backup heat that's going to be much more expensive to run than what that heat pump is. And so, you know, we, we are really careful with our homeowners and our customers to make sure that they're, one, the, the load calculation is being done correctly, but then when we look at that system, we want to make sure they've addressed as many of the things that they can, and we will put duct sealing in, in there as part of it before they switch over. Um, because the last thing we want is for a homeowner to switch over for all the right reasons, but then to get a utility bill that is just crushing to them, um, which we, you know, it, it's, we've seen before, so... We've also, and Jared, I'm, I'm probably going to tap you in on this one here. We um, we conducted a, a study on this as well. One of the other big factors when a customer moves from from a gas furnace to heat pump is, um, you know, it, it blows colder air. It, the, the, the air isn't as heated as high, as, as hot as a gas furnace. So when it's not as warm and you have duct leakage, it's like a compounding effect. And I think... Jared, correct me if I'm wrong, but the results of our study, can you can you get into that a little bit? I think there's a pretty big difference that we noticed. Yeah, at the at the register, about seven degrees uh, difference uh, between between the two. Um, what we've um, what we've also found with uh, contractors that are trying to you know uh, make the move or or have already been uh, installing heat pumps. They, they get that complaint from a customer on that first winter, the first cold snap that, that's there, that it's a different feeling, uh, you know, than a, a gas or uh, oil-fired furnace coming out of, the, out of the register with the heat pump, right? And uh, customers think that something is wrong, and it's creating uh, a, a service call in, in some cases, uh, if, if nothing else, an explanation and, and trying to assuage a, a, a customer that is, that's just not feeling as comfortable. So, you know, we find that, you know, sealing ductwork along with, uh, uh, heat pump installations really helps improve that delivered, uh, temperature, obviously the delivered efficiency, like Rob talked about as well, but also helps, uh, quell those, uh, callback, uh, comfort issues that are, that are noticed on those uh, those times, especially when uh, you know if there's an auxiliary heat uh, method, the resistance heat strips that are kicking in if, uh, if it's not a hybrid system. So there's a couple studies out there also that uh, it's a Northern California study. I think it's uh, 40 homes. They did uh, they did a study out there, and I I won't quote the percentage because I don't have that handy. A significant percentage of uh, reduction of resistant heat needed. Uh, throughout the uh, the winter, um, it was something like forty uh, percent uh, uh, difference, or or forty percent less uh, resistant heat needed because it's made it made the systems efficient, and they were delivering it um, uh, delivering the, the air much more uh, effectively than what uh, uh, on unsealed ductwork. So. I, I can add something in here. I'll, I'll throw it in a chat or something later around that study. Um, sorry for not having that handy, but but it does make a significant difference in the delivered comfort and the efficiency of that. That even though it's higher efficient equipment, uh, not maximized, right? Yeah. Jared, Tracy, one of the things we've seen on you know related to that when a home switches over to heat pump or even in cooling for that matter, and it's struggling. Uh, because of duct leakage and we're not getting the CFMs to the distant registers or rooms or even, even yeah. ones close. You know, a, a common answer to that uh, will be to turn up air speeds or your fan speeds. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they'll, they'll turn up fan speeds to get more CFMs to those rooms and they will get more CFMs, but that temperature rise will decrease in heating mode and then it even, you know, it exacerbates some of those problems you discussed. So sealing yeah. that ductwork to make sure you're getting 100% of the, the air that leaves that furnace mm -hmm. or that air handler to your rooms is really important when you switch over for, for comfort. Yeah, and on a new system install, the contractor, that's a, 
that's not a revenue generating call, right? So it's, it's <laughs> no. a dramatic cost for that contractor who's trying to do the right thing with high efficient equipment and heat pumps and uh, and it, it ends up biting them uh, sometimes on the back end. Yep, great points. All right, so I think we're gonna kind of transition to the second half of uh, today's content. And we're gonna talk to you a little bit about what is uh, automated duct sealing and, and why is it the best choice? There's other ways to seal duct work. Um, automated duct sealing is is uh, gonna be a good choice. So Jared, I'm gonna hand it off to you here. Sure, this video is gonna go pretty quick. So I'm gonna try to narrate right along with it um, and uh, stay with me. We can we can talk more, uh, uh, get more descriptive around uh, the process. So go ahead, Tracy. Well, if you're gonna narrate, I might need to turn the sound for the video off. Uh, um, give me one second, <laughs> and I, I, I can do. Just give me one second. I didn't realize you were going to narrate. Go ahead, go ahead and play it. Then. Go ahead and play it. We'll be fine, and then we can oh, talk. Okay. My, my apologies to the audience. Here we go. was actually uh, showing a simplified version of, of what happens, but the uh, uh, to be able to use the automated duct sealing uh, system here, that's pictured here, you pressurize the, the system. So it's blocking off the registers and isolating the HVAC equipment, right? We No sealant would go through the cabinet. Um, and uh, so in, in that case, um, you could do supply side uh, separately from return or uh, you can do both at the same time with a Y kit, but um, the idea here is blocking at the register. That was one of the very first steps there, right? So blocking at the register uh, and uh, being able to pressurize with the system. There's a fan in there that is going to, uh, it's going to pressurize that, uh, the system that is uh, at an adequate pressure for the duct material type, right? So sheet metal, more rigid, you can pressurize at a higher, uh, higher level. Uh, duct board, flex duct, uh, less rigid, uh, you would pressurize at a, at a lower level. But uh, during the, the pre-sealed test that's, uh, that's gonna be done in every single process here, it's gonna, it's gonna be the test in, right? So it'll do um, very much like a um, uh, duct blaster test, uh, pressurizing on the inside and, and getting a starting leakage amount. Everything being controlled here, the fan speed, um, and the software, the testing is, is done uh, with the computer that, that comes with it, it connects wirelessly to the system uh, and um, it uses that, uh, just communicates back and forth, uses that from a, uh, there we go, there's a seal certificate, um, giving a starting point. Uh, this is the, this would be the starting point here, the initial CFM 556. I don't know if you can see that here. Um, I'm using my mouse cursor on my side and I I'm sure <laughs> can't see it. There you go. <laughs> there you go. You. Uh, and, then, uh, and then during the seal process, the sealant is injected into uh, by a nozzle uh, that's you know, used uh, specifically for the system um, to, and atomized with compressed air into the system and conducted into the ductwork. Physics takes over from there, right? These randomized uh, sticky particles of, of polymer are driven to the, the leak points. It doesn't coat or encapsulate the duct system. It's going specifically to the leaks, right? And the um, system monitors all that on a dashboard throughout the seal process. And 
once it's uh, uh, once the system determines that it's sealed tightly, it will prompt the user so the user can stop. If it is a um, Rob probably has a, a familiarity with this, but if, if you're trying to achieve a tighter duct system, uh, you can the user can push past that. And and um, in this result here showing final leakage at 25 CFM. Uh, and so that was a 95.5% improvement. Now the, the software uh, in, the, in the system is very unique and it monitors things, uh, air pressure and flow and uh, the compressed air, so this turns on and off the sealant, everything uh, about it. And the reason why this is important is, uh, as opposed to manual sealing, if you have an energy efficiency target to hit, whether that's code or energy star or lead, whatever you're trying to hit and achieve, the duct efficiency question is removed because before leaving uh, the project with uh, the automated method here, you know that you're you're on point with what you're trying to get from the duct system uh, from an efficiency standpoint. Um, so what we found is hand sealing is guessing and I've seen some really, really well done work. It looks really, really good, um, but it's so imprecise. And unfortunately, sometimes it's it's subject to, you know, the the person who's applying it, right? And um, it can it can look like it's sealed really well, uh, but uh, you know, in uh, at rough end hitting the top side or or worse retrofit applications where you can't even access a lot of it, um, your and the technician is just not able to get nearly as much uh, uh, as quickly and efficiently as what the automated process does. So it takes out the guesswork, it's measured, it's certified, uh, and it's, it's extremely reliable with um, you know, knowing what the outcome is. So we've, we've got, um, uh, there's a built-in manometer that is uh, certified and calibrated. Uh, that's, you know, it's an industry standard measuring device. It's in the system already. Um, the entire job is recorded. So how much time doing pre-seal tests, how much time sealing, how much time in the post-seal test, uh, a flushing process to flush everything out so that maintenance is built in. And then, like I mentioned, publishing the exact results with that seal certificate. If you're working with builders, the seal certificate helps, uh, you know, sort of un helps understand what, uh, what was achieved. Anyone that uh, is not an HVAC uh, contractor or not um, not using testing equipment, this helps paint the picture, explains it. For a homeowner uh, doing a handoff on what, what was actually done in the house, it's pretty, you know, it makes the intangible tangible. That's that's the reason for the SEAL certificate there. Yep. Sorry for jumping out of order there, Tracy. I got you. <laughs> um, so the, uh, the big thing here uh, with the opportunity of, of improving efficiency and comfort and, and the indoor air quality aspect is 143 million existing housing units in the U.S. And that is a bunch. Um, and um, if you look at an estimated 95% of those have excessive duct leakage, um, that means there's a lot of opportunity to make a, a, some big improvements, not just on the duct system, but on the performance of the home in general, right? So um, using a, the automated duct sealing process, um, again, takes the, the question out of it. It provides the contractors uh, a way to deliver more uh, value as well uh, in their solution. So Rob, I know that you, you offer this. How are you uh, providing this maybe in the, the two sides of what you do in new construction and in uh, uh, existing opportunities or uh, existing installs, retrofit applications. So for taking new construction first, um, we do a tremendous amount of code compliance testing, blow order testing, duct testing. Um, this is a natural extension for that. As the codes have gotten more and more strict, um, more and more duct work is being tested, um, uh, AeroSeal has become a natural extension of that in terms of testing this. Um, the, you know, the biggest change, whether you're testing for code compliance or now really with, you know, we're, we're, the biggest change we're seeing now is the 45L is getting attached with Energy Star. 
is we have to make sure we're changing the timing. We used to be out for sealing our new construction ductwork at rough. Um, so before the air handler was in place, um, which would work for code, but for Energy Star, you know, we have to test across that uh, air handler. So we're waiting a little longer, getting out there a little later um, and, and having to seal and then remove all our plugs and test across the entire system to make sure we get that all of that leakage um, included in our testing. For existing homes, um, we, like I, well, I mentioned briefly before, we do a lot of uh, home energy audits. And we get most of our calls are for comfort, IEQ related, sometimes energy efficiency. So we get a lot of work from that, but we get a tremendous amount of people now that do just call looking for duct sealing. They've seen, they've read the articles, they've done their homework um, and they will call. And so either we will go directly or we will schedule an assessment to make sure it is the right solution for them. So it's, you know, we want to make sure we're fixing their the, the root cause and not just the symptoms, but uh, aerosol is a big part of that in, in any case. Does that answer your question? Okay. Yeah, that's really well. We've on the new construction side, we've uh, a lot of our contractors get pulled in sometimes, fortunately or unfortunately, as rescue work. Uh, <laughs> I think Rob Rob's been in uh, uh, some of that, uh, where drywall is up, ducts are covered, access is not great, uh, if if at all. So um, so there there is good news is that there's a there's a way to get it get it done right. Um, the better approach is, um, you know, get it done um, uh, in new construction before that. But um, it, I think it works. Um, our contractors work uh, both ways. Um, we've had a one of the, uh, I think one of the first ones that when I was here, 200, 200 uh, unit lead project apartment building, drywall is already up and they were failing. And we had a contractor that uh, looked for a lot of solutions, um, came to us and, and was able to use the automated back sealing process to uh, get everything uh, in compliance. So uh, can save for sure, uh, but um, uh, for existing applications, homeowners, um, you know, they, you've got to translate the, the symptom to uh, the solution. Like, why are they feeling a certain way? Why are they seeing a lot of dust or feeling a certain way in their home? So. Um, all right. And then on to what are we putting in there? Right. Mm -hmm. So everyone is going to be concerned of, of what, you know, and should be rightfully, because there's been so many instances through the years of building homes where, uh, going back and, and trying to fix, uh, situations. But, uh, this product is, uh, it's a polymer, uh, and it is UL 1381, um, certified for longevity and testing. This is very similar uh, process, testing process to tape and mastic. The, um, the process itself is, uh, has an expected lifespan of over 40 plus years. This sealant is newer, uh, I believe um, about a year and a half we've had it. Um, and uh, new and improved as they say, but um, still has the same, uh, same safe, um, safe products in it, ICCES certification, uh, sort of reinforces the UL testing, uh, National Green Building Standards certified. The key to this sealant and that longevity that I mentioned is it remains flexible. So if, especially on rigid duct work during expansion and contraction cycles with heating and cooling, the sealant flexes with it. So that allows it to last much, much longer. And Jared, I just want to make sure the listeners aren't, we reformulated the sealant yes. uh, about a year and a half ago, yeah. but um, so we've really only changed the formula, you know, one time. Right. Um, and I, maybe it's a little off topic. I don't know if you want to address why uh, we reformulated. It might be important for the audience to hear that. Yeah. So the, the, the previous uh, sealant formulation, uh, was done, it stayed, it stayed somewhat tacky when applied, right? So what we wanted was we wanted something with less tact, uh, uh, tact to it that, you know, in use, if, if dirt or dust or whatever got into the duct system, that it wouldn't be um, adhering um, or allowing any dirt or dust to stick to it. It's still clean ducts. There's no limitation or anything around that. 
what we actually found with this new formulation is uh, it, it has uh, much better bonding strength once applied. So it's a bonus. It's less tacky, way less tacky, and um, has a really nice bonding strength. And, and uh, uh, the uh, longevity testing, again, on that really helps to reinforce. So it's guaranteed to homeowners for 10 years, but will last much longer uh, than that. So good and really kind of we talked about existing homes we talked about new construction kind of taking us back to new construction jared your last two points here yep yeah so with 1.4 million new housing starts in 2023 what we found is it's challenging to make uh to get to uh an energy code uh measure to uh you know to, for energy star uh, just actually just doing a quality install. Sealing by hand often means technicians are sealing and leaving the job site. And then it's being tested. And then they have to go back and reseal and try and find leaks and um, things like that to remedy the situation. And then testing again. We've had contractors that have had at least 50% failure. We've had one in... Uh, uh, in uh, the Atlanta area that said, you know, six to seven uh, out of every 10, they've had to go back on site and try to readdress. And that's because it's just not precise, but with hand sealing. Taking that automation there, they've been able to hit, uh, you know, without a miss so far on uh, using the system and, and hitting the uh, code requirements that they're looking for. So this translates to saving costs for the contractor, but for builders. They can stay on schedule. Um, it doesn't delay anything. It, it lets them get their uh, certificate of occupancy much more reliably and on time. But for contractors, they can actually do more work with the same workforce because they're not having to go back and do any rework there. So, Rob, any uh, anything you want to add with your experience there in the construction on that? You know, it's. I'm sure we'll get the question if we're testing. Um, is there conflict? Um, it is incredibly frustrating for us to go out and test ductwork and watch it fail and then go out and test again and watch it fail again and sometimes for a third time. Um, our approach to this is we will come out of the gate and say, hey, we're, you know, if a duct system fails, we'll, we'll typically give the option to aerosail and, and right along that with, you know, we'll give them another two or three contractors that can do it for them. Um, but, um, after a little, after, you know, lessons learned, um, contractors would much rather go with aerosol than, you know, try and try and, and fail. Because they, they do the math, right? So they spend their time with their resources, with their guys, the ceiling, and watch it not get there. Um, and just see how hard it is to, or, or, or see how hard it is to get there when anyway ceiling is mastic and tape. Um, so they, it's kind of a natural progression for most of our, our contractors. All right. Uh, looks like we got a lot of questions rolling in, fellas. Yeah, wanna... are, we, uh, are we ready to, to get into the Q&A stage here? I think so. Okay, great. That, uh, that sprung up on me a lot faster than I thought. So yeah, we have a lot of questions coming in here. We're not going to probably be able to get to them all, but at some point we will get those questions over to you all to hopefully respond back to everybody on anything we might have missed. But let's get to some of the, um, the, the key questions here. And before we get to those, again, just a quick reminder to you all um, that uh, yes, this session is being recorded. And so if you want to, if you miss some of it or want to rewatch it or help share it out on social media um, when it's posted to all of your, um, friends and colleagues, we'd really appreciate that. So you can find that information uh, on our YouTube channel. It should be posted there in the next couple of days. Um, and you can either check back then, or um, even better, you can um, head there now, click subscribe, and when it is available, you can receive um, uh, instant uh, instant access um, on, on that. 
And then uh, for those of you watching mm -hmm. this uh, live, or well, sorry, watching the recording of this session, but not watching it live, so not right now, you just need to head over and take the um, the uh, 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 quiz with an 80% passing rate. And when you complete that quiz, you will receive your um, continuing education uh, certificate. Um, so there, sorry, that now my slides, now my screen is sharing. And so now you can see there's our YouTube channel. You can go and access that. And again, as a reminder, take that quiz with an 80% passing rate. For those of you here live today, check your spam from certs at gutenbergcerts.com. And as long as you've been here for the entire CEU approved hour, you will receive your certificate right in your inbox. Also make sure to take that survey that pops up at the end here when we close out. And you can put in your AIA number in there if you need AIA and we will report that. And we also just wanna get your feedback, whether you need CEUs or not, we'd love to hear from you on how we are doing. Um, and as those questions are rolling in, we're gonna to get to them. Again, a huge thanks to our board of directors, our volunteers, uh, our executive director, Jose Reyna, our, I think we hit 350 members this week. I gotta double check, but thanks to the support of all of our members and our top tier sponsors uh, who are helping make homes more sustainable like Build Equinox, Panasonic, Mitsubishi, Timber HP and Climate, uh, all of them are gonna help you make your homes um, more sustainable and achieve uh, better results. So I wanna get into some questions. Let's talk about some general questions and then maybe splinter off into new construction and existing. Um, and, and this one can be for both, but let's take them in piecemeal. Of course, the thing that's on everybody's mind is, you know, what is this cost? And, and maybe we put it in the context and start with new construction and I think you were hinting at this a little bit, Rob, but um, you know, what um, if, if we're obviously for the most cases, we have to seal our ductwork. Not, I mean, I guess there are codes in certain parts of the country where maybe you don't, and that might depend on if it's inside or outside of the envelope, but let's assume that you do. And so I would be maybe thinking about the cost of this in the context of Again, you were pointing out the trade-off of all the manual labor that's needed. And if it, something went wrong with doing it, you know, the physical way versus doing this. So, you know, what kind of costs or upcharge are we talking about here to, uh, in general, on average, um, you know, to, to do this, um, you know, on a, on a new construction project, um, you know, versus that traditional uh, approach? Um, you could look at this a couple of different ways. So <laughs> we point out to our contractors, it's generally about the cost. You're going to be right in the range of about three duct tests, um, to do a single system. So, uh, incremental, they're going to be in the right around the $800 range, uh, for new construction incremental to just testing, um, cause they're going to have to have it tested. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's a pretty good number, at least for our market. I know it varies by market, varies by volume and things like that but um i think that's a good ballpark and that yeah. as we know that doesn't take very long or very many hours for their for their uh techs to be sealing ductwork to, to get to that either, so and tracy jared anything to add just on the the cost side jared do you want to i mean I, I can talk on retro you want to talk a little bit about new construction if you want to i yeah, I, I think it is, um, uh, I, I think it, it's going to depend on, uh, you know, on the area and on the target. That's really what it is. Uh, uh, you know, how, uh, if, if uh, I know some contractors are able to work out with builders and in high volume new construction areas where to apply it, uh, uh, to actually do the seal applications, if it's in one development, it, it's a totally different cost than if they're, you know, uh, one home here, one home across town, that sort of thing. But, um, but Rob's spot on with, uh, you know, on the pricing. He's yeah. he's the one running uh, uh, running it and pricing it more way more often than what I'm uh, doing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And on the retrofit side, you know, I think you know, in my my home, and I think a lot of homes, you can kind of access maybe. 20 to 30% of the ductwork, you can go down there and mastic it and seal it. But the, the cost to fix the rest of the ductwork, you're tearing out drywall, right? I mean, yep. so maybe when you go to speak to the retrofit side, again, are you contrasting these costs with what your other choice is, which is either do nothing 
or or tear drywall out. I mean, just can you speak to that a little bit, Tracy? <laughs> oh, I sure can. I'm, I'm dying to. Yeah. In fact, yeah. <laughs> that's a great that's a great technique that we we teach um, our network partners to use when they're presenting options to their customers. So look, the other way you solve this is, um, yeah, we got to tear into your drywall. Or you might have talked to other contractors who've tried to solve your uneven temperature by offering zoning. That's expensive. Um, or maybe another contractor tried to solve your problem by going with a bigger system, like Rob was mentioning, right? So trying to solve the problem the wrong way and with a much bigger ticket price, right? So let's solve it the right way. Let's do it in the least invasive way possible and in the most effective manner so you get what you want. Um, and, the, and the other point I want to add, you got me fired up there, Brett. Uh, the other point I want to add, you know, we are we understand that uh, you got to make money when you're out there doing this work. So we're always looking at ways to try to uh, innovate our technology so the end user, the Robs out there in the world, um, can get through the job much faster. Uh, the fact that it's automated makes it much easier, but it's still, it can be time consuming. So we're doing everything we can to shave uh, as much time as we can off of the job. Um, and so we have an awesome engineering team that's working hard to make it go faster. Yeah. Um, now we talk about health and, um, you know, I'm curious, you know, obviously not sealing your duct work, not having good duct work. We talked about the health risks right there, but anytime we add a, a, a substance, you're talking about a potential health risk there, off-gassing, VOCs. So you, you you brought up some questions there, but my question is two twofold. One is, I think the Green Guard Gold standard is kind of your standard, and I didn't see that on your list. So I'm curious, are these sealant technologies able to get that? Can they apply for that? And then two, you know, is there any data out there of like pre and post? Like you've got air, you know, air quality monitors are now becoming very popular. People are getting them. Is anyone monitoring their home before and then after this? and seeing if there's been any noticeable differences in spikes and VOCs. So it's kind of a two-part question. One is the certification of the product. The other is, is there any data to show that there's not risks um, or the risks are diminished? <laughs> Jared, you want to take part one? I can take part two. Absolutely. Yeah. So when we look at the, the sealant and certification, mm -hmm. um, we've, we really have done it around what does, what's the market asking for? Um, what we found, um, both on the residential and on the commercial mm -hmm. side, where as you can imagine there's there's a lot you know a lot of questions around this. Um, but um, you know, is 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 Green Guard Gold preventing aeroseal or the sealant from being applied in, into places? Um, and it hasn't yet. Uh, from what we found, um, again, running it on the commercial side, where this I think very commonly asked question around what's included, um, or I'm sorry, what's in what's in the, the sealant itself. So uh, with UL, ICCES, and uh, NGBS, we've, we found that that actually addresses most concerns or, you know, all the concerns. If there's a, a reason to, to get Green Guard Gold, or we've even looked at some other uh, maybe more like I would say homeowner facing certifications, I don't know, good housekeeping, you know, something like that, right? The good housekeeping seal uh, certification. We looked at those and we just decided against them for now. But uh, if the market is asking for that and we should go and do that, we will. And on the testing, any any like um, pre and post testing you've done before? Yeah. So I'll. I'll address that. Um, and then please, uh, Jared, Rob, chime in if you have anything to add. Um, I think the the way to start answering that is not enough testing, but we do have um, a dealer who has done some testing with before and after <clears throat> air quality monitors. Mm -hmm. And his findings were that the particulate count was reduced on average by over 50%. Hmm. Now, that is, you're look, you're asking us for quantitative information. Sure. And I, I wish we had more of it to offer. What we have loads of is qualitative information. So we have case studies where sealing the ductwork 
with the automated process in a, a surgical center, for example, has solved the cross-contamination issue that that facility was experiencing. So in, in some ways, and I, I say this lightly, in some ways, who cares what the, the quantitative thing is? We solved the problem by blocking the source of that cross-contamination and you know, and they could make all the money they were making with the surgeries, right? But um, and there are other case studies as well. Rob, you probably um, or you might have something to to add on this. Have you done any before and after? We have. So definitely on the particulate side, we've seen reduced uh, particulate counts. Without a doubt, we we will look at that because you're making your envelope tighter. Um, so particulate counts typically do drop in the house. Um, we've done total VOC testing. Um, using calibrated meters, third-party lab testing samples, um, vacuum tests. Um, we've never seen an increase in total VOC uh, after installation. Now, is this a, stati a statistically valid sample set? No. I mean, we're probably, I think, five, ten homes where we've done the total VOC testing pre and post. Um, so, yeah, I mean, more testing needs to be done from what, from what we've seen. We have no problem, you know, telling a homeowner that you have nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. Um, now some questions here, kind of aiming on the new construction side here, and um, so like for the um, green building programs, you know, Energy Star um, and Lead the First Energy Star, for example, um, a lot of times we have to also get what we call it um, a. a, a, a uh, total duct leakage to outside test. And the only way to get that test is to simultaneously do the testing of the duct system and the blower, at least to my knowledge, unless Rob, you you can educate me better here, but you got to do both. And I'm assuming, you know, your folks you're sending out aren't hauling around blower door tests. And so are your, you know, the folks you're working with getting educated on this, on how to properly do this, where they have to hit a result that includes both the envelope and the duct leakage at the same time to achieve Energy Star for Inflation Reduction Act or these residential green building programs? How is that happening and being communicated? So we are unique, so we do carry blower doors. So right. <laughs> can do those tests. But um, what I like to, you know, the example I like to give here is typically our total leakage. You know, Jared threw up the, the procedure before 25 CFM. We can get below that. We're typically in single digits. So our total leakage is going to be 10 CFM or less. So if you want to use it as your total, assuming you're doing the, the, the test in the uh, valid, but the test is valid, you're testing across the air handler and everything's included, which we will do. It takes a little extra work in the seal, but we can do that. All right, we'll use the total leakage number. We'll, you, know, you can use the total leakage number as leakage to the outside because leakage to the outside can never be higher than the total leakage. Um, so you're, you're probably giving them a little bit more leakage to the outside, but we're talking five or 10 CFM um, because that's what the total's at. Does that make sense? Yeah, and, and, and it does. And I guess, and I'm, you know, and obviously you, you're out there doing this, right? You understand both worlds, but I know there are others who are just focused and that makes sense too. They're just focused on getting the ducts properly sealed, right? Getting that report, but then they're detached from the, Hey, we needed we need a blower door test and duct leakage test. And let me give you a real world example. We had a rescue project who did the duct leakage testing, but did it out, you know. And then the raider came later and did the total duct leakage to outside testing, and that failed. <laughs> so, and there was and the and the and the and the folks, you know, doing the advanced um, duct sealing. We're totally unaware of this being needed or how it even worked. And so I'm just curious if if they're receiving training on the importance of this and how it works or what the expectation of that conversation is for the new construction world. So, so our, our our folks are trained in the, in the testing requirements for the, the different certifications. So the biggest part I would say, like the example you, you mentioned there, I would guess it's set up you know, uh, for the different tests. Are you taping all, you know, are you testing with the registers and drywall in place and the air handler in place? That's the biggest mistake we've seen. I think when we've been calling called in post for someone that says, hey, our, our, our ducks have been aero sealed. I don't understand this. What well, was the air handler in place? No, 
Okay, well, that could be 100 plus CFM of leakage right there that was not accounted for before. Boot, boot to drywall connections, you know, Aerosil's not gonna impact that. Um, have those been sealed? Have those been dealt with? Those are all things that you have to, to look at and coach to to make sure that you're getting a, again, a valid test. Well, and I'm glad you mentioned that because there were some questions on here, like what kind of physical manual labor pre-sealing does someone need to do to prep for this? And it sounds like it, there is some that needs to be done. You know, there's some specific questions in here on how big of a hole can exist before we can put this in that we have to physically, you know, reduce it to, um, you know, before we can do this kind of uh, seal it. <laughs> So uh, you know, that, that's a really good question from a new construction standpoint, because when we first started this, um, and actually I'll use the city of Chicago as an example here, still to this day, you'll get, and some inspectors want to see mastic and tape. So those systems are mastic and tape. And guess mm -hmm. what? You're still failing duct tests. Mm -hmm. uh, not that the city's requiring it, or they, they are, but at least they're not requiring the test to be published or, or handed in. Mm -hmm. But um, when those, there's some attempt, these systems seal very easily. Um, when, but what we're seeing now is people are starting to get the message when we don't have to use tape and mastic in many cases and we can rely on AeroSeal, those holes are getting much bigger. They will take longer to seal, which could impact the cost to the contractor if there's more sealant used. Um, but it will seal up to a five eighths inch hole, I think is the, the you know, still the, the rule of thumb that's, that's given it will seal those bigger holes. It just takes a little more sealant. And, and as we've seen contractors migrate through this and realize what AeroSeal can do, wow, have we seen quality of installs drop in some cases because they, you know, they, they don't tape it, they don't mask it, there's nothing that's done. And in fairness, we've even some, seen some GCs that ask that their contractors not use uh, mastic or tape because they know AeroSeal is going to outlast it. So they want the, all, the total seal being done by AeroSeal. You know, the coaching I would give in the new construction side there is it's you got to follow smack the rules right so you need at least three screws screws in every connection um, to make sure that you, you don't have huge gaps and voids and you have to have a quality install right the connections have to be sound right number of screws if that's followed barrel is a great product and we'll, we'll see these quickly um now on the on the existing home side let's talk briefly about home prep um first of all i think the first question that came in was do you have to do um duct cleaning before this is that required and is that something that's usually provided by the same in entity i mean are they also hey we're cleaning your duct hey then we're sealing it so it can be cleaned before or after the seal um you tell homeowners it's not required um mm -hmm. If we get into a home that is very, very dirty, we usually will encourage them to clean that ductwork because it is easier if, if you do it before. Uh, we do not clean ductwork. Uh, we typically will partner with someone to do that. So we will help the homeowner get their ductwork clean before we seal. But if in many cases where um, homeowners have been vast, we've often, we carry duct scopes. We'll find the ducts are you know, not actually dirty. Um, so there's no need for it, but um, you can do it pre or post, depending on the, the, the level of dirt in that duct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, can I just add something to that, Brett? Yeah, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rob, Rob spot on our, our training is, is exactly what, what mm -hmm. Rob said. You know, we, we, we don't require it, but we do recommend um, that if there's a uh, one eighth of an inch build up in that duct work it yeah. probably needs to be cleaned before sealing. And then the other thing that's beautiful about um, duct cleaning and duct sealing, you'll find that uh, the majority, if not all, the majority, if not all of the prep required for duct cleaning is essentially the same prep you need to do for duct sealing. And so it's it's a it makes sense. There's labor uh, efficiency built into the job. Why stop at cleaning when you can just finish and and seal as well? So then you would say a vast majority of your folks doing this work are also doing duct cleaning and maybe just doing it both at the same time? I'd say it's, yeah, it's common for exactly what Rob described. Uh, you know, he doesn't offer duct cleaning, but he partners with duct cleaners when it makes sense for the job to have cleaning done before sealing. Yeah. And then some of our partners 
have duct cleaning services in house. So for them, it is kind of a standard, you know, clean, yeah. seal, take care of the ductwork. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, what, you know, you're thinking of people living in their homes, you're thinking of tenants and multifamily buildings, they got to go somewhere. What is the time they need to be out? Uh, what is the time, you know, that the expectation of you, you know, you're out of your home? Is it a couple hours, a couple, a day, a couple days? Who wants this one? <laughs> so well, I'll jump in and I will have to, to run here eventually, but um, yeah. so the guidance we give to our homeowners for existing homes, um, if you're an adult, typically you have no problems being there during the seal. Um, if you have a small children, infants, small pets, um, you know, there, there could be some sealant in the air during the seal. Um, you know, we'd recommend maybe they, they be out, but our, our process is a little different. We do use our blower to pressurize the home um, while we're sealing existing homes. So that helps us keep the sealant out of the home almost 100%. Mm -hmm. and it's not perfect, but uh, mm -hmm. that's the way we handle it. Um, mm -hmm. And typically during prep, you know, we'll, we'll coach our homeowners. We will prep and we will tell you when we're ready to seal. If you feel more comfortable being out of the house, you're more than mm -hmm. welcome to do so. Um, and then we'll notify them when you're finished. Yeah. Yeah, for there's also scrubber fans that are ran during the process, right? So it'll those particles get into the living space. It can be pulled in, trapped into a filter there as well. That comes with all of the uh, each app, uh, equipment package. Okay. And to, to Rob's point, the the sealing portion of the job is the fastest part of the job. So if the like he said, if the homeowner isn't comfortable and they'd like to leave during the sealing process, maybe an hour, you know, worst case scenario, but in, in most cases, it's it's a pretty quick process to do the actual sealing. Yeah. I will throw the caveat in there. If you're in an existing home where the ductwork is challenging, mm -hmm. you know, we always coach our homeowners, this is an all-day process. We're going to be here yeah. first in the morning and we're going to leave here close to five o'clock. We will not interrupt dinner hour, but mm -hmm. be prepared, especially if we've seen the house. When the ductwork has bigger holes, gaps, voids, um, that sealing process may take much longer. Um, we've we've sealed for you know three or four hours in different homes and taken it from fourteen hundred yeah. CFM down to you know ten, but that's a long process. And so, mm -hmm. and there will be more sealant near then. So mm -hmm. it's you know something we work around. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and I don't want to hold you, Rob. If you have to get going, I know there's some more questions here, um, but uh, just let me know when you when you have to jump. But you know, obviously I look at your company, Rob, like an energy verification rating services company, almost as perfect. You mentioned you come in, you find the problem. You're like, here's the solution. Let's solve the problem. Obviously, depending on what program someone's going for, there's the sort of third party piece there that could be of concern. I could see that being different on different programs. Um, but, you know, the question I'm trying to get at here is, you know, who, who, who are the entities out there that are offering these services? You know, are they more the case where they're energy rating service providers? Are they insulation companies? Are they HVAC companies? Are they duct ceiling companies who want to upgrade? You know, is it all the above? Like, who is your typical, you know, entity professional background that's taking this on? In our area, um, well, I was maybe a little concerned. So we were the first dealer in the area back in 2011. Mm -hmm. um, uh, separate from one other company that was doing it from the start. Um, but uh, over time, Aerosur grew that to about 40 or 60 different HVAC dealers, which I'm being completely forthright here and was concerning. But uh, mm -hmm. lo and behold, I'm actually doing, we're doing ceiling for many HVAC contractors now, even some that have machines. Um, because it's just not, well, their technician's time is limited and they would rather have someone else do the ceiling. Um, so for, and to answer your question directly, in our area, probably the, the number one entity would be HVAC uh, dealers and installers that have the machines. Uh, but if it's outside of that, there's us and then there's, there is some duct cleaners. Um, I don't know of any other testing or verifying company that's doing it offhand. But I would say HVAC contractors are probably one of the most typical. I mean, I think that's what I've seen for some of the meetings, Tracy, Jared. The, the yeah, you're 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 correct. The when you segment the network, 
across the U.S. and Canada, uh, look at the residential network. Um, you know, we have over a thousand dealers technically across the U.S. and Canada, and the largest percentage is from um, the HVAC segment. Uh, but we do have a, a growing population from energy-focused companies like yours, Rob, um, because it just makes sense. It, it just makes sense to be part of what you're already doing. Uh, and then another segment that that is growing is uh, our duct cleaning population. And then, Jared, I don't know if you want to touch a tiny bit on on how this is integrating well with solar uh, companies as well. Yeah, not all solar companies, but solar that that have a, an ener energy services element to them, right? So they're trying to uh, provide a bigger offset, as they refer to it. So they want to reduce the consumption on, of the home, energy consumption before they produce the uh, through the panels. And uh, so they they've uh, you know we've I'll say this uh, we've leveled up. I think who who we're selling to, who is becoming aerosol providers uh, just since I've been here. Uh, what a uh, couple of reasons for that? We want to make sure that they're, they're good quality contractors that are doing good work, but also we, we want to look out for them as much as we can to not you know give them something they can use, right? That will be beneficial for their company. And do these do they uh, um, people who want to get the training? Do they get a certification through you? Does it also include like any kind of other national certifications, BPI, um, HERS or ERI or anything else like that? Not at this time. So they, they go through technical training and certification. Mm -hmm. And Tracy, you want to speak to the, uh, we are we are going to be, be bringing a uh, energy uh, specific uh, training uh, soon. I think it's still to be determined, but uh, with utility companies, having interest in uh, this automated system. Go ahead, Tracy. Yeah, that, and, and Rob kind of touched on it earlier in, in the discussion. Um, it's mm -hmm. not just duck performance, it's the home yeah. performance. And so we are uh, working on an energy, an EE, energy efficiency certification that, that does speak exactly to the point that Rob made. Um, but our certification is primarily uh, designed to help dealers pass the test, check the box, and demonstrate that they understand how to effectively and properly perform an automated duct sealing job. Um, now, we do have BPI proctors here at our company. So we are able to, once they get some experience under their belts and they want to take it to that next level, um, you know, we're, we're prepared to help them do so and get the education they need so they are taking a holistic approach. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, um, when it comes to the um, re rebates and incentives that are coming out, uh, especially those under the Inflation Reduction Act, um, you know, where does duct sealing and especially advanced duct sealing fit in? You know, I can just think of, I think we briefly discuss the 45L. We just did a session on that. Uh, so if you're trying to hit the DOE zero energy ready target requirements, you have to have these lower uh, duct leakage results, yep. um, mostly for new construction and multifamily, but can be used on major gut rehabs. Or, you know, I think of 179D, which we'll be doing a session on. So increasing your overall energy efficiency of your building pre and post for commercial and multifamily but uh, what about the homes rebates that are coming out through the states or the 25C tax credits? Is duct yep. sealing included in that? You bet it is. And we are thrilled that it is. So uh, it is it is covered under the 25C um, home improvement credit. It's a 30% credit up to $1,200. And the other thing that that I think a lot of people get confused about is with 25C, you are allowed to stack credits mm -hmm if they are in separate categories. So for example, uh, home energy audit is in its own category. You can get the $150 credit for that. Mm. You could do duct sealing, get the 30% for that and do a heat pump install. As long as you don't exceed $3,200 for the year, you can stack the incentive. So it, it it's awesome. It is helping drive some of the demand. But the other thing that we're seeing that I'm I'm really excited about is local utility companies 
Hmm. Because of what we started the presentation with, the pressure that they have to lower uh, uh, energy demand, um, we're seeing more and more local rebates uh, pop up. In fact, there are several across the country that are over a thousand dollars instant rebate to the consumer hmm. for uh, applying advanced duct sealing to to their homes. Now, the other thing you mentioned the the state level homes funding, it's still messy. Uh, I think, you know, we've only seen two states, I think, apply and and yeah. move forward with the funding. Sure. Um, but yes, it's covered under that as well. I think the New York one is a $1,600 um, uh, rebate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I know those states have only so many things they can do. I know there's going to be likely energy modeling pathways. So yeah. we know that duct ceiling shows up in those as a component, right, of your savings. So yeah. so yeah, it sounds like one way or another reducing that <clears throat> that duct leakage is going to happen. Um, do you know what kind of strategies are being used out there, especially on, you know, new construction projects um, where we, we have a model that's kind of like, you know, why guess when you can know? And so it seems to me that we now know, we can now know what, at the beginning of a project in the concept stage, ideally what the duct leakage will, and even the wall leakage will be, and we'll cover that in the session coming up here in a couple of months, right? We can now know what it will be. We no longer have to guess. And so where do you, do you how often do you see that these technologies are getting integrated right into the contract? So it's like, yep, we have to hit this result. Here's how we're gonna do it. or this is a contingency, right? So if if our contractors fail to do it, we have these contingency dollars to then pay for this technology to come in and do it. So you're kind of just assuming a failure will occur and you have it in there rather than, oh no, like now we have to go out and get quotes. We have to get bids. Every, everybody's gone. You know, the money's all drying up. <laughs> Where do you see people being proactive rather than, you know, reactive? <laughs> Jared? Maybe you don't. <laughs> yeah, I, sorry. Yeah, hello? Yeah. Hello? I'm sorry. Trying to get my, my mic yeah. turned off. So being proactive versus reactive on, um, sorry, I want to make sure I'm, I'm answering the right question, Brett. Being proactive or versus reactive. Yeah. So like you just, the, you know, you're just putting it right in the contract. It's like, you're just going to either use this or this is a contingency plan, right? This technology is the contingency when inevitably the duct leakage fails. When our radar comes through and tells you you fail, now you know it's going to be five hundred thousand dollars. Boom, you got it done. No one's surprised, you know. <laughs> yeah. So on, a, uh, just so you all know, that number I'm coming up with is just <laughs> thinking of a massive multifamily project that's not real. That's not a real number, so don't quote me on that. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, a lot of the um, I think it depends on the, the the scale of the job, right? So mm -hmm. if I think there are there are several of our uh, what we call dealers, right? Um, mm -hmm. That if it's a if it's smaller units, uh, fewer number of registers, and easy access, they may still hand seal. They might, right? But in most cases, the what they've learned from doing this, the assuredness of having, uh, you know, be, being able to seal and move on to the next job, nothing to go back, you know, not having to go back and uh, do any rework. That's the biggest thing. It's peace of mind. They can. It, it's in their rear view, and they're they're not going back, right? So. Uh, you know that we are, we're now on the new construction side, helping to work with the builder, build that value into the conversation. So they are much more proactive on this. Mm. The scenarios where it's it's uh, reactive, it's generally like that apartment building complex that I mentioned. There's you've got to hit a code or uh, an energy efficiency target, and 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 it's and it's too late. So it's a rescue, right? Mm -hmm. um, that. Even though it's still less expensive to use our system, it's still more expensive than if, if, if it would have been done up front. So I think the preference is to, to do it, do it, uh, get it done, get it in the rear view as soon as possible. So mm -hmm. proactively is the transition where most, uh, where we see most are doing it. Yeah. Um, mobile home renovations, <laughs> is there any exemptions to that or is this? going to work most of the time. 
It does. It does work. So we were actually talking about it. And we've got a blog article on it. Um, yeah. uh, we were talking about it today with the sales team this uh, this morning. Um, it, it works well with that as well. And you know, you can a little bit different access to uh, to, to ducks, but um, uh, big benefit with it. And uh, we are seeing more interest um, um, as especially on the solar side. Um, you know, some solar mm-hmm. panel sales to uh, that that part of the market yeah. uh, and they're going in and, and sealing uh, as well with it. So, yeah, it's answer. always interesting to see solar and efficiency paired. Cause sometimes that means you're selling less solar, but you're being more honest. So yeah. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm great. I'm grateful to see the more honest solar companies springing up and saying, let me help you sell less solar. So <laughs> let me help you buy less of my solar um uh or electrify and buy more of it right so that's the opportunity but anyway um we are kind of at our end here i think we've in general a lot of the questions tried to answer a big bulk of them in some sweeping answers but we're going to send you over the rest of the questions if we missed any to send out if you want so otherwise um you know jared tracy uh rob really appreciate your time and i'll start with uh you know, Jared, Tracy, if you want to answer this question, where can people go to uh, contact you or learn more or maybe sign up if they want to be a vendor and and reach out? Sure. Dealer acquisition is what uh, my my team does, right? So uh, we, um, uh, my contact information is there, jared.scott at aerosil.com. That is my cell number, 937-751-3945. And mm-hmm. Happy to talk about all of that. And then for Tracy's program. Yeah, uh, so for my program, uh, right now I'm focused uh, on duct cleaner segment. Uh, So if we have any listeners out there from that uh, industry, uh, we've got a great program for uh, duct cleaners, uh, Clean Seal. Love to talk to you more about that. Um, But again, Jared and I, we've been here a long time. So I think any questions in general that we can help answer we're both more than happy to do so. And thank you very much for having us today. We appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, Rob, where can people go to contact you or learn more about, you know, your services and what you offer? Um, well, I see LinkedIn's being targeted already. I saw a few notifications of bio- that always works, but um, <laughs> uh, my email is best uh, for sure. I see, I saw some questions in the q and I'm happy to answer. Um, shoot me an email. I'm, I'm available. So, yeah. All right. Well, I really appreciate all your time and sticking around a little bit later here to answer these questions. And thank you so much. And for the rest of you, we will catch you on our session uh, next week. So goodbye. See you then. Thank you. Thank you. Be sure to check out all of our courses available online that you can watch anytime and anywhere to pick up your CEUs. Before you go, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube to get weekly updates and stay up to date on green building science courses, webinars, and home tours. Thanks again.